Welcome to the studio here at African Utility Week and Power Gen Africa. Today I'm speaking with Sweden's Deputy Minister for Trade about the energy transition in Africa. Welcome, Niklas. Thank you, Ross. The energy transition in Africa, what are some of the lessons that Africa can learn from developed countries like Sweden? Well, I think one of the most important things when you look at that is that Sweden has actually shown that a decoupling from growth uh, to also lower emissions is possible. In the last 20 years, something we've outpaced the, the OECD average growth with some 20-25% and we managed to seriously reduce greenhouse gas emissions at the same time. So this is something which, which is, is key. Change is possible uh, when we're looking for the transition when it comes to climate change. Also, we have a lot of experience when it comes to system policies, technologies, uh, best available technologies, also often available from Swedish businesses. Uh, so I think there is a lot to learn from, uh, from our example, but one of the key takeaways, I think, is that it doesn't have to be growth and environmental consciousness standing on two different sides here. We can manage to do both, and we have to because these are the opportunities and the challenges we're facing, and energy is at the core today. So what are the, some of the opportunities for Swedish business, businesses in Africa? Well, one of the things, of course, that if you look at, at Africa today, there is much needed investments as well as transition uh, when it comes to energy. Uh, there needs to be heavy investments in order to bring the growth and opportunities to the people, but there also need to be a very, very strong transition from coal to renewable energy. Uh, and these, we have a lot of experiences in this area. Uh, like I said, a lot of companies where, you know, ABB with transmission who are very strong in that. We have smaller, new companies, very, very strong when it comes to digital things like measurement, uh, you know, low-hanging fruits, which doesn't take the, the, also the large investment, but are very, very important in order to make renewable energy a possibility and a part in our energy systems. And we have to do that. We have to look at this thing. We do not have much time when it comes to the climate, and it's something that's going to cost all of us if we can't manage it. Of course, disruptive technology is changing the landscape. What is your vision for the next five to ten years in Africa? Well, one of the things is, of course, extremely important in order to bring investments into the countries is, you know, to make the ease of doing business and, and some of the things. One of the most uh, worrying things for, for, for uh, European businesses when they look at doing business in Africa is of course corruption. To combat corruption, find the ways in order to do this, uh, extremely important. The other thing is of course to, to really look into how do, we, how do we make this happen with renewable energy. Because there will be difficulty getting investments for coal uh, mm -hmm. from investors in Europe. So that implies policy changes? That implies, but I you see in, in South Africa the opening up for, for renewable energy in South Africa, which is very, very welcome and paves the way for a possibility. But you have to understand, of course, there is a lot of people being dependent, so you need a just transition. We need to work together in order to make sure that people get jobs. If you look at the South Africa, of course, from a European or from a Swedish perspective, with the, with the amount of, of unemployed youth, this is a serious problem. We all understand the challenges that South Africa are having and we want to help and be part of this change. Thank you very much for joining us on the studio today. Be sure to subscribe to our channels for more industry-related content. Thanks.